and surrendering our lives to go into ministry. But I want to also tell you that we've had our share of the world pushing back. We've lost friendships because we follow God's call. Early on in our call, we had problems and struggles with our extended family, which has been resolved at this point. They've seen the truth and why God took us where he took us. But at the beginning, it was hard. There was a cost involved. We've been attacked physically. We've been attacked spiritually. In the past, we've had serious problems with our house, which again, thank God, have been resolved. Hopefully somebody will buy it soon. <laughs> we have been ridiculed by people for following Christ. We've, we've uh, been put in the situation many times where we have seen things happen, bad things happen to people. We've seen men take advantage of God's kingdom for their own profit and advancement. We've been through some division and attack of God's church, the body. We've seen some great mountaintop experiences, folks. We've been on some great mountaintops, but we've also seen some battles. My point in telling you this is not to make you feel sorry for us. That's not my point at all. I don't want to gain any sympathy here. My point in telling you this is that to carry the legacy, we have to understand that it's not always going to be easy. Amen. We have to understand that. We have to understand that to pass a spiritual legacy on to the next generation, it's going to take work. It's going to take toil. It's going to take blood, sweat, and tears to pass that legacy on to the next generation. We're going to have setbacks. We're going to fail from time to time. We're going to see those that we work with decide to walk away from the path Jesus wants them to follow. That is tough when that kind of thing happens. But we have to press on. And we have to do just like Jesus did with the men he was mentoring. We have to share the truth with those we mentor. That it's not always going to be easy. We have to share the ugly parts of ministry with them. We have to share with them that there are going to be parts of serving the church and serving God that are going to be hard. There are going to be times when you hand somebody a bag of food at the food pantry and they're going to be mad because they didn't get what they wanted. Right, Bob? You're going to... There he is. We're going to have times when we run into ungrateful people. We're going to have times when we run into people who are supposed to be more spiritually mature, but they're not. We're going to run into times when people lash out at us, when people push back against us. There are going to be times when people think we're crazy for following Jesus. There are going to be struggles, but we don't get a get-out-of-life-free-of-pain card when we decide to follow Jesus. Jesus himself said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. Remember, though, that promise that Jesus made the disciples. In this life you will have trouble, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. I can get through the bad. You can get through the bad. Because we know that promise that God has overcome. And because he loves us enough to send Jesus to die for us. Because he loves us enough to make that sacrifice that we memorialize every Sunday, we know that we will overcome the world because of Jesus Christ. We shall overcome. Lastly, we must teach them that they must pass on the legacy to the generation after them. The legacy passing cannot stop with them. Part of what we teach them is that they have to keep passing the legacy on. The legacy that started when Jesus gave it to the disciples has been going and going and going for centuries. But folks, we have to get something very clear today. The carriers of the legacy today are not as many as we once were. Amen? Amen. We're not as many as we once were. There aren't as many people passionately passing the legacy on to the next generation, which is why it's all the more important for us to get busy today. We have to make sure that when we pass the legacy on to the next generation, that they are carrying it with the purpose in mind to pass it on to the one following them. I asked these questions a couple of weeks ago. Who could you be mentoring? Who could mentor you? Who would you like to be mentored by? Are you looking to make connections for the purpose of passing on the legacy? Teaching someone how to serve, teaching someone how to teach, teaching someone how to love and live like Jesus. Don't wait for someone to come to you. 
If you want to mentor someone, then go up and start building a relationship with them. And showing them and teaching them how to serve and to live like Jesus. If you want to be mentored, don't wait for someone to come to you. Go to someone you respect in the faith. Someone that you look up to in the faith and say, hey, would you spend one uh, day a week with me for a couple of hours just mentoring me and teaching me how you live so I can learn to live my Christian walk like I see you living yours? Go ask. Go initiate that. Men of the church, I want to share something with you. In January of 2016, our seven elders are going to be looking for men to mentor into the eldership. You're not going to be asked to be an elder right away. But our elders are going to spend time, they're going to spend a whole year with a man or a couple of men to mentor them, to prepare them, to get them ready to someday serve as an elder by taking them through an elder's training course. We want men to no longer just be thrown into eldership. We want them to learn how to be an elder and be encouraged and be mentored so that when they become an elder, they're ready to hit the ground running. They're ready to serve God. And our elders are excited about that, I think. <laughs> but but it is, it's exactly what we need to be doing in all areas of the church, not just with the eldership. So guys of the church, men of the church, you don't have to be a young man or you don't have to be an older man. But if you feel God calling you to something higher in the church, something more than what you're currently doing, and then all of a sudden an elder comes to you and says, hey, I've noticed that I see some potential in you. I would like to encourage you and mentor you and train you to be an elder someday. And then you sit around and you say, you know, God never speaks to me anymore like, like he did to the people in the Bible. Maybe God's speaking to you. Maybe God's talking to you. Maybe God's pulling at your heart and calling you to serve him. Just like that boy who stood on Omaha Beach 70 years removed from that horrific, heroic day. He is from a generation that doesn't even remember 9-11, much less World War II. Amen? But someone took the time to pass that legacy of the D-Day invasion on to him. And he grew a passion about it that he went all the way to that place and stood on that beach and held that flag for an hour and a half with his other hand saluting and honoring the men who came across that beach to protect, to drive out the Nazi Germany forces. Just like that boy is carrying on that legacy. Just like that boy refuses to let that legacy die, we need to make sure that we have that same passion about carrying the legacy of Jesus Christ and making sure that someone is standing on that beach. That next generation is there to carry on that legacy. We pray for you. Father God, we come before you today on this Memorial Day. And Father, while we definitely are going to be taking time throughout this weekend to remember those who have sacrificed their lives for the protection and 